Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll share a presentation. So, um, uh, so hello everyone. I'm Anna Goidea, and I'll present you uh, my project Protomicro Kion, 3D printed by a hybrid column for sustainable construction. This is a project I've done together with David Andreen, um, and also in collaboration with Dimitrios Flodas uh, for the biological support. So this project focuses on the material development and fabrication for architectural scales of a 3D printed fungal biocomposite. A material that has good insulative properties for both heat and sound is hydrophobic and has an interesting potential for mechanical performance. The research go goes beyond the manipulation of a material that is already there to the design of a new material system in cooperation with other living agents. So our goal is to bring biology and its processes to architectural scale. Why do we want to do this? Because we are now in a time of critical need for alternative solutions. And because biology is the most powerful manufacturing technology we know, I believe it is highly relevant for architecture and design. So this project was carried through in a transdisciplinary manner um, at the Department of Architecture, uh, Biology and Microbial Ecology and at our additive manufacturing workshop at Lund University in Sweden. So here you can see uh, the process of the making of the prototype. It starts with the cultivation of a living agent, uh, the blending, then the inoculation of the substrate, uh, then the living pulp is 3D printed, and then there's a period of growth after which uh, it's being dried. So the living agent in this case is a fungal mycelium. Uh, so mycelium is the root network of fungi. Uh, that's the organism that makes the mushrooms that we all know. So we're not using the mushrooms as the, the fruits that we eat, but the root network that changes the material. Um, so a lot of the work has been done in the microbiology lab um, that involves preparing media for propagating the fungal growth as well as um, isolating species for material tests. Here you can see a series of petri dish showing all the cultures that we collected in order to isolate a single species from the wild. Um, and this is uh, the fungus that we have uh, chosen. We've, we've tested several ones um, for different parameters, and this is the one that has had the most successful results. Um, and you can see it growing on the left on a petri dish and then to the right on our substrate. Uh, but what is a substrate? So that's the base. It's a scaffolding on which um, the, the fungus grows and transforms it. And what is this made of? Well, it's uh, cellulose and wood chips uh, that are mixed together with water uh, and a few other um, like thickening agents and some clay just to, to make the process work better. Um, but it's important to note that the fiber sources for the substrate can have a variety can come from a variety of places. Um, so this provides a great opportunity for integrating waste from different industries back into production, as well as sourcing locally as fibers are available in most biomes in different forms. And since it involves working with the dynamic element, the living fungi, these can adapt and evolve to grow on different substrate, which is important because it doesn't create a further need for monocultures. Um, so when the substrate and inoculum um, are blended together, then they're extruded together. So this is a, the printing stage. Um, it's important to know that there's no chemical or thermosetting agents in the pulp. So the binding happens naturally post printing as the hyphae, the, so the root network grows and binds and fuses the layers together. And here you can see um, on the right, as it um, after the entire process of fabrication, uh, the left is the control, and to the right is the fungal biocomposite. Um, it's hydrophobicity. You can see the bubble just repels. So this is a really interesting material property that is given entirely um, through biotransformation. And as well, dispersion in water. You can see the. Um, uh, the sample on the right, after 10 hours of being submerged in water, it still maintains its structural integrity. So it means that it's completely chemically changed. Um, 
in order to be more integral. So here, um, this is one of the components that is 3D printed. You can see the air channels that are running through several, through several components. So at a single component, uh, these serve the purpose of ensuring oxygen access to the fungus. So these folds increase the surface area that the fungus grows on. Um, and then more fungal growth means more biotransformation. So this was only possible through 3D printing, um, unlike other more traditional me methods of cast of such as casting biomaterials. This ensures a much stronger material due to the fact there is a lot more growth. Um, so this is part of the computational design that we employed um, to make the column. Uh, is based on a voxel space, and then we employed a reaction diffusion that generates these patterns and the voids that will end up um, giving the instructions of, of, the, of the printer. So the printing process is in two steps. Um, so as the components remain wet throughout the growth stage, and because that's when they are unstable, the assembly is done after the drying step. So um, these are some of the components that we printed. And then this is a column uh, which is currently exhibited in Venice uh, with another project of ours at Palazzo Mora. Um, and then, yes, uh, we also won the sustainability uh, as well as the material at the 3D Pioneers Challenge and the Autodesk Special Mention. And this project is also published um, at Fabricate, uh, which is a conference on uh, digital fabrication and architecture uh, that you can read more on. So thank you very much for listening.